Hello, my name is Evan, and I will be discussing alternative energy sources. This is our formal proposal presentation. Um, our group is uh, Mallory Allard, Kasem Bazi, Jason Kalapi, Evan Donovan, Mahin Hawk, and Corey Sanders. The main goal for our group uh, for this project was to research and find the best and most efficient energy source to lower carbon emissions, lower costs, and for whatever alternative energy source that we found, uh, we of course wanted to make it uh, be aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing as possible. Um, there's many different forms of energy that we looked at. Um, and that will be discussed by all of, the, all, all of our different team members. So I will hand it off to Jason to discuss solar energy. Okay, so my name is Jason. Uh, I've researched solar energy. And uh, what I've found is that solar energy is not only cost effective, but is also environmentally friendly and more sustainable than fossil fuel powered energy. Um, so as for the cost, as you can see in this uh, figure here on the right, um, the cost of solar energy is decreasing. So in 1975, it was at $101.05 per watt. And in 2015, it was at $0.61 cents per watt. Additionally, in 2020, the cost of solar energy was at $0.18 cents per watt. Um, so... Solar energy is also more environmentally friendly. Uh, it is about 20 times lower in carbon emissions than coal powered energy. Um, that being, so solar energy, the only carbon emissions from solar energy are those from the manufacturing process. Uh, meaning that in use, solar energy does not emit any carbon emissions. Um, so in order to negate those manufacturing carbon emissions, solar panels must be in use for three years and they are considered carbon neutral. Um, lastly, solar energy is more sustainable, meaning it will be an energy source that is able to be used by future generations. Um, solar energy will be able to be used for the lifetime of the sun, which is estimated to be about five, five billion more years, uh, whereas Coal, we only have a coal supply that is estimated to last another 114 years. The uh, estimate for the oil supply is only another 51 years. And the estimate for the natural gas supply is only 53 more years. So uh, that is the benefits of solar energy. And uh, I'm going to pass this on to Kesem, who will talk about wind energy. Hello, everybody. My name is Kesem Bezzi. And... I am going to talk about wind energy and how it is used and why wind energy is a good alternative for burning fossil fuels. So wind, ener wind energy, what is wind power? Wind power is a more efficient, sustainable energy source powered by windmills to create power. So, uh, so wind turbines are the most common that are used to produce power. It happens from wind, where, and then the wind turbine starts spinning, which creates kinetic energy. But and then it, that power turns into electrical energy by the generator. So I'm going to talk about the advantages of wind power. Wind power are the cleanest form of energy. Wind turbines run strictly on power of wind, so no burning of fossil fuels is necessary, which reduces air pollution for a much healthier environment. And a good advantage of uh, wind power is the job creations. Wind turbine technicians are America's fastest growing technicians. There's going to be much more jobs produced just from the wind power, windmills, the turbines. So also, it is going to advance technology. As more people use turbines for their homes and businesses, experts will redesign and enhance the functionality of power. And 
a good thing about wind power is the low operating costs. So disadvantages of wind power are noise pollution, visual appearance, and impact on local wildlife. So, I mean, they are going to make noise, but as technology goes, I think that they will find a solution for that. They will find a solution for that because our technology is getting better and better day by day. The visual appearance, they just look too, they're like, some of them are too big and people don't look to, like the look, but they will make a new design if more people use them. And then another problem is the impact of local wildlife. So, I mean, some, like, let's say a bat flies into one and it, it could kill a bat. But with the redesign of a wind power, that could be solved. So the only way they'll redesign them and figure out more ways is if the whole, like most of the world starts using them and then they will make them different. So yeah. So now I will pass this on to Evan, which he is the next speaker and he will explain. Thank you. Thank you, Kassem. I will be discussing hydroelectric energy, uh, a renewable energy source that uses large amount of water traveling from higher to lower elevations to create pure energy is what hydroelectric energy does. Essentially shown in this photograph here, um, potential energy is the water at a higher elevation. And as it travels down, uh, towards the lower elevation of water, it produces mechanical energy uh, while turning the turbine. And then that uh, in turn uh, supports the generator and the generator then creates electricity uh, that's able to use for uh, whatever it's uh, needed for. Some advantages and disadvantages of a hydroelectric dam is uh, it's inexpensive after the initial investment investment. Um, it's very, very expensive uh, upfront to build. Um, but after the first couple of years or so, um, it's pretty minimal, uh, the price uh, to can keep it uh, running. Um, so that can be seen as an advantage or a disadvantage. Um, another advantage is the ability to produce energy on demand. Um, dams can be used um whenever whenever needed it can be turned off and turned on whenever needed um another advantage is that it produces uh very low emissions so uh unlike some other um efficient energies that we researched uh this is a very low emission produced uh source of energy uh, another advantage is it does not typically affect surrounding towns or cities um this can be true after the initial um, construction of it. So other forms of energy could require very large uh, buildings to be built uh, and that could take place of where homes could be or could be an eyesore. But typically dams are, um, they look pretty appealing and they typically won't affect uh, city life or anything like that too much. Um, some disadvantages, like I mentioned before, it's a very large upfront investment. So it really depends on the business plan um, that the investors have and um, how they plan to spend their money. And another disadvantage is that uh, hydroelectric energy really can only be used uh, wherever large sources of water are located. Um, so if there's not a really large river or large lake running through the area, um, then unfortunately a hydropower uh, dam would not be able to be used. I will send it off to uh, let's to talk about nuclear energy. All right. All right. Thank you, Evan. So for my research on nuclear power, I'll be discussing a few major points, which are its efficiency, 
its production and its current uses and its future potential. So to start off with, we have the production of nuclear power, which comes from nuclear fission. And nuclear fission is the process in which atoms split, which releases energy and heats the water, and in turn makes steam, which turns to turbine blades and makes energy. So the diagram shown below shows a visual how the energy is produced within a nuclear power plant. Next, we have its efficiency, which according to several sources, nuclear energy powers 20% of the United States. And it also has a 93% capacity factor, which means of the 100% potential capacity factor of how much power it can create and store, it uses up to 93%, which is far higher than other energy sources. And in addition to this, nuclear power plants are run ran 24 hours, seven days a week. So they're always being used, producing the most energy possible. Next, I'll be talking about the uses that nuclear energy has currently. So currently it's used in a wide variety of ways from X-rays and radiation treatment in medicine to powering submarines and increasing their propulsion capabilities in deep sea to being in smoke detectors that contain elements from nuclear reactors that go off when smoke enters it, to being used in agriculture to control insects, then, to, sorry, to control, to control insects that destroy crops. Nuclear energy has several functions and shown us how diverse it can be, which opens up the limitless possibilities that nuclear energy can have in the future. Now I'll be talking about the pros and cons of nuclear energy. So to start off with, nuclear energy produces low amounts of carbon emissions compared to the other energy sources. So for example, it, nuclear energy creates around 29 tons of carbon dioxide per gigawatt hour of energy compared to fossil fuels, which creates upwards of 800 tons per hour. Next, we have the fact that nuclear energy isn't an intermittent energy source that runs at specific times like solar, which collects its energy from the sunlight and wind, which functions when there's wind blowing. It's capable of running 24 hours a day, like I previously mentioned, due to the fact that all it has to do is have a nuclear reaction within the atoms and that heats the water, so that can run at any time of the day. And lastly, it's inexpensive to run a nuclear power plant compared to other sources because it's according to the according to some sources, it has a cost between 33 to 50% of a coal plant's uh, average cost to produce energy. Now, although there are a lot of pros to nuclear energy, there are cons as well. And one of them being that uh, the possibility of a nuclear meltdown going wrong, such as the Chernobyl incident where the nuclear power plant melted down and it resulted in a catastrophe. And there's also the nuclear waste that's produced from every nuclear power plant up to 34,000 tons a year. And it takes years for it to grade and there's no safe way to contain it. So it's always the possibility of a radiation leak. And lastly, although nuclear plants are cheap to run, they're expensive to build with the average cost being between six and $9 billion for an 1100 megawatt per hour nuclear power plant. But all in all, despite the cons of nuclear energy, it still has a lot of pros and room to grow and improve over time. So now I'll pass it off to Mahim who will discuss fossil fuels. Thanks, Corey. So now that we've discussed all the other energy sources, alternative energy sources, it's important to understand the main energy source that we're trying to replace being fossil fuels. So what is it? Fossil fuels are energy sources derived from organic and plant matter that, has, that was created over millions of years of pressure and time, which ended up creating energy sources such as uh, petroleum, uh, coal, and natural gas. As of right now, 80% of the world's energy is currently supplied by fossil fuels. So when looking at the bottom right at the chart, you can see that petroleum, 
natural gas, and coal still remain the top three most used energy sources in the United States. Burning fossil fuels in total accounted for 74% of the U.S. greenhouse emissions in 2019. Although they still remain the mo as the most prevalent energy source, they are not the only way to create energy. So why is it important that we pay attention to fossil fuels and how much we're using it? So right now, fossil fuels is leading to global warming, which is also known as climate change. And this has very many disastrous effects onto the world. For example, in the next 5 to 25 years, climate change is going to lead to a 10% loss in crop yield, which will have its own ramifications as our world's need for food continues to grow. And if its supply chain is disrupted even just a little bit, it could lead to a lot of famine all throughout the world. Additionally, it is also costing a lot of property damage. So in total, it's going to it's estimated that it will do $106 billion in coastal property damage, which will probably end up dislocating many people and animals, which is already a big enough problem as it is. So what does the uh, public think about fossil fuels? Majority of Americans can agree that f they want fossil fuel companies to start paying for the damages instead of themselves using our money as taxpayer money. Most, a, a huge majority of Americans also agree that they have a big distrust in fossil fuel companies, which could be due to events such as like oil leaks into the ocean and there's many other disastrous things that have come from fossil fuel companies. So now that we've looked at fossil fuels, I'm going to pass it off to Mallory, who's going to talk about the um, looking at all the other alternative energy sources and seeing which one would be best to use for the future and what will be the most feasible to in implement. Thanks, Mahim. Hi, everybody. I will begin by giving you guys a breakdown of the analysis of each alternative energy source. So starting with efficiency, and I measured efficiency by the cost of production, the cost of maintenance, and the cost of fuel or whatever it takes to run the source. The efficiency level from most efficient to least is wind energy, following by hydroelectric energy, then nuclear energy, and finally solar energy. And each of these energy sources are ideal in different types of environments and different climates. So I will now go over that. For wind energy, it is obviously most ideal in a windy climate that is also in a large open field. Hydroelectric energy is most ideal in a body of water like a river that is fast flowing. Nuclear energy is most ideal in an area that is not prone to earthquakes and also is not very heavily populated. And this is because in the event that there is some type of nuclear leak or explosion at the plant, it is not harming very many people or hopefully nobody at all. And finally, solar energy is most ideal in a sunny climate. Now, if you steer your attention to this visual right here, you will see a proposal of uh, steering the energy sources to all renewable by the year 2050. If you look over to the left, you can see 2010, almost all of our energy was supplied by non-renewable sources. And as the years go on, those non-renewables are slowly decreasing. And we would like to see by the year 2050, um, all of our energy being powered by renewables. And now I will be going into the pros and cons of each alternative energy source. I will start with wind energy again. Um, obviously a positive is that it's renewable, it's clean, and it's also a free source after the cost of production, of course. 
It also provides many jobs in the production of wind turbines and also the installation of wind turbines. A con is it's not always windy. So in the event it's not windy and these turbines aren't rotating, it's not producing any energy. It also, these turbines are most ideal in large open areas. And these are not areas that are heavily populated like cities and cities is where the most energy is needed. So it's hard to transport that energy sometimes. In hydroelectric energy, a positive, it's, it's a renewable source. It needs a high demand of energy and it's easily paired with other energy sources, which is definitely a huge thing. Um, on the negative side, it's extremely expensive to build and there also aren't very many places that we can implement this source. With nuclear energy, um, a positive is that it is a low pollutive energy source and it has a very high output of energy at a very low cost. Now a negative for nuclear energy is it's not renewable and it requires mining of uranium which produces a radioactive waste. And for solar energy, um, a pro is it's renewable, it has a very low maintenance fee, and it is a very clean source. A con to this um, is it has to be sunny to produce any energy, and it also has a fairly high initial cost in relativity to its maintenance cost. And that finalizes my analysis of the energy sources. I will now pass the mic to Corey for the conclusion of our report. Thank you guys. Thank you, Mallory. So in conclusion, every energy source has its pros and cons, which we've discussed throughout this presentation, from wind to hydro to nuclear to fossil fuels to solar. Yeah. Every energy source, it has a great deal of pros and it also can have an equal amount of cons. But our overall goal in this presentation wasn't to find a perfect energy source. It was to analyze each renewable energy source and see how they could be better incorporated in society and replace fossil fuels as a dominant and most important leading energy source. So in the end, renewable energy's potential is always growing and could replace fossil fuels importance over time due to the way that its popularity is increasing and it's becoming more common in our society to try to work with renewable energy over continuing to work with coal plants or just fossil fuels and continuing to damage our environment. So if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or my group mate via email. And thank you for your time listening to our presentation.